Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. We are seeing cursor related interview question as a continuation of that. In this video, we will see about what is an explicit cursor and how to access the value using explicit cursor. In the previous video, we have seen about what is a cursor and what are the types of cursor. Just to quickly give you a summary of what you have learned in the previous video is Cursor is nothing but a pointer to a memory location which holds the information about the SQL statement and it results it. Broadly, we can categorize cursor into two types. One is called implicit cursor and another is called explicit cursor. Implicit cursor is managed by Oracle. So any uh, SQL statement given to Oracle engine, Oracle will open a memory location, executes it, returns the result set through the implicit cursor, whereas the explicit cursor is fully managed by developer. So we have like further uh, subtypes under uh, explicit cursor, which we, which we will see in subsequent videos. So in this video, we'll see about how to use an explicit cursor. So before that, uh, as I mentioned, explicit cursor is fully managed by developer. So he can declare, open it, fetches the information from the cursor and he can close the cursor. So to, uh, to use the explicit cursor, a developer has to follow four steps and you have to follow the four steps exactly in the same order. The first step is declaration. See, like any other declaration, for example, if you want to use any variable, the first thing is before even using a variable, we need to first declare a variable. Only after declaring a variable, you will be able to use that variable. Very similar to that, if you want to use a cursor, before that we just need to declare the cursor. So declaration is nothing but we need to say the name of the cursor and what is the select statement that is associated to this cursor. For example, in this case, I am associating a select statement called select ename from employee to a name called emp underscore name underscore list. So this name is called cursor variable or cursor name. So we need to define or we need to declare using a keyword called cursor. So this is called cursor declaration and this should be within the declaration section that is within declare and begin keyword. So this is about declaration. So this is nothing but we are giving a name for a select statement that is you can say something like an, a pointer to a select statement. So this is a cursor declaration. The second step is we need to open that cursor. To open the cursor, we'll be using a keyword called open and just we need to say the cursor name. Whatever the cursor name you have declared, you just open, say open followed by the cursor name. The moment you say open cursor name or the moment uh, Oracle engine executes the statement open cursor name, Oracle will execute the underlying statement and store all the results set in the particular memory location. So this memory location is called the cursor. The moment the information are loaded, it points the pointer to the first row. As you can see here, as you can see here, I've just uh, mentioned like a red color arrow mark. The pointer will start pointing to the first row of the result set. The third step after opening is we need to fetch the information from the memory location for to fetch the information we will be using a keyword called fetch so followed by fetch you need to say the name of the cursor so since in this case the curse uh, result set is having just only one column information i've just mentioned only one variable see every time you fetches the information from a memory location Oracle returns one row from the memory location. So in this case, the moment the uh, fetch statement executed, whatever the value that is pointed by the pointer will be fetched into the variable. So in this case, the king, because the pointer is pointing to the first row, the value king will be loaded to this variable vname. Since the next line is DBMS output, the king value will get printed as you can see here the king value will get printed. Again, if you try to fetch the next uh, pointer, uh, okay, just before that, the once the record is fetched, the pointer will be moved to the next location, okay? 
So now if you see the pointer actually moved from king to the blake. So every time a fetch statement is executed, the pointer will keep moving forward. Suppose now if I execute again one more fetch statement, as you can see here, I wrote another fetch statement here. Now what will happen? Since the pointer is now pointing to the blake, the blake value will be loaded into the variable here and it will get printed. So the Blake is printed after fetching the information, the pointer will be moved to the third row. So like that, as you can keep fetching the information, the pointer will keep moving uh, till the end of the record. Once you reach the end of the record, you need to check whether it reaches the end of the record or not. Then finally, you can close the cursor to close the cursor. We'll be using a keyword called close followed by the cursor name. The moment close cursor name statement executes, Oracle will close this memory location and releases the memory. Okay, so this is about the four sequential steps we need to follow to declare, open, fetch and close a cursor. Let me show you this example and let us see how to fetch all the information. I've just showed you here how to fetch two information. In fact, you can keep copy pasting the fetch statement but that is not the efficient way because we will not know how many records available in the memory location. So now let us see a small demo. Okay, as you can see here, the exact same uh, example I've just given here. Let me first execute it. As you can see, we just got printed the king and blade. Suppose if I want to uh, print one more uh, value, I'll just copy paste the fetch statement. Let me execute it. As you can see, it is just printing King Blake Clark. Like that we can fetch any number of value or whatever the value we are interested in. But in, uh, obviously this is not an efficient way because we are just keep fetching the information. Instead of fetching like this, what we can do, we can just put this fetch statement inside a loop. Okay, so loop, uh, let me put in loop. Okay, one more key important thing, we need to keep checking because every fetch will keep moving the pointer backwards. So we need to keep checking whether the pointer actually reached the end of record or not. For that we can say exit when the cursor name percentage not found. Okay, uh, this not found is nothing but an attribute. A cursor have like few attribute informations. So not found is one such attribute. The not found will return a boolean value. The moment it reaches the end of record, it, it this returns a true. So that is why I just put the cursor name percentage not found. See, there are few other cursor attributes. We'll see in detail about all the rest of the attributes in the next video. So for time being, you can just keep it in mind that the not found will return true the moment it reaches the end of record. Now let me just execute the same query. So now if you see, this is fetching all the information. Once it reaches the end of record, it just comes out of the loop. So this is about the cursor. So uh, I hope th this is enough from an interview point, but from uh, the working aspect, you just need to know few more information. There is one uh, dynamic uh, view called V dollar open underscore cursor, which holds information about all the session cursors. Uh, for example, just now we opened a cursor called select e name from employee you will be able to see that particular statement somewhere here yeah you can see here this day so this is the cursor statement right so there is one more in important information you, you should know from cursor point of view that is a parameter in the v dollar parameter if you search for open underscore cursors there will be one uh, value defined so in this case it is like 300 so this is the maximum number of cursors that can be opened in the session. If you try to open more than this, you will get an error saying that maximum number of cursors exceeded. So uh, make sure that you are using the cursors optimally because if there is like too much of cursors, chances are there that at runtime you might get a maximum number of cursors exceeded error. Okay. So uh, of course, the exactly the same uh, example what we have seen. The key thing here is that uh, the fetch instead of fetching one by one record and now I just put it into the loop and I'm just exiting out the moment the cursor is not found. Okay. Uh, the rest of the questions related to cursor we'll see in the subsequent videos like uh, cursor attributes, parameterized cursors, 
very important question like a ref cursor strongly typed versus weakly typed and few classes along with the cursor like for update class and where current of class and cursor versus collection because uh, the intention is basically to iterate through a list of value that you can achieve uh, through both cursor as well as collection we'll see like uh, when we should use cursor and when we should use a collection and uh, of course the difference between an explicit cursor and a ref cursor uh, if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature videos interview question concept video and sql practical question if you want any questions to be answered you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id thanks a lot for watching this video